So let me just start the meeting. Hello. Hello. <laughs> it's, it's the weekly plat weekly platform meeting. It looks like uh, we're going to have a fairly quick meeting. Not very many people here. So let's get started. Uh, let's see. Things on the list right now. Kadir to look into how people rate related articles after clicking through. So what did you yes. what did you find out, Kadir? It's too bad that so few people are actually in this meeting today because there is so uh, much interesting information here. Um, so the first thing is actually uh, there is very little difference between uh, people uh, clicking on uh, uh, just voting and people who uh, vote after clicking on a, a related article. It's 66% to 69%. Um, so that tells me that people find um, deleted articles actually helpful. Uh, at least we can infer that from how they're voting on the on the side. Um, but of course, as you can also see, not a lot of people are using related articles. That might be a good thing actually, because you want uh, as many people as possible to uh, be on the right article. So you don't want a lot of people to use the uh, related threads. Right. Um, because that means that they aren't on the right article. However, it, it's only in 2% of the cases uh, where people uh, use the related articles feature. And that's too bad because you already know from the helpfulness rating that more than 20% um, are probably on the wrong article because that's how they rate articles. Not to, really in the quality of it, more whether they are on the right page or on the wrong page. That mm -hmm. has a much bigger impact on the quality of the article. Um, so one way to, uh, so this is one way to say that um, it might be helpful to steer more people towards the related article um, area uh, because at least 20% don't land on the right article. So they could be helped by getting going to another article. Um, what about so that? What, yeah. what about the thing that in most articles, if there is actually anything related to that topic, we link to it in the article itself. I wonder if that has any effect that's, on it. That's a good point, um, but that's stuff that I didn't actually uh, take into account. I only looked at those who clicked in the related articles. Right. We know. So I'm sorry, uh, it sounded like you were about to say something else when I cut you off. Well, no, I, so, uh, I mean, uh, the question is what conclusions to take from this. Uh, first, I would say let's leave uh, the related articles where they are, but also draw yeah. a little bit more attention on them and see if that actually leads to um, people being happier or less happy. So if they are, uh, if we draw more attention to it, and people click on them and they're less happy, like which means that the helpfulness goes down, that means that we shouldn't actually highlight it, um, that the articles that are linked uh, from within the article uh, are good enough and um, linking to additional articles isn't going to benefit a large um, uh, fraction of the population here. So that's that will be the conclusion I would draw from this. Like, let's experiment with guiding more people towards that and see what happens. Hmm. What about? I mean, yeah. To me, it feels like there's a lot of things that you could that you could try. Like, for instance, what about? Um, I mean, yeah. What if instead of having the related articles even there, you know, what if that stuff was gone and then you could easily navigate uh, back to the topics that you were navigating through? Would that be well, better? That only How would we know? Right. That's all stuff. To Actually, that's I think that's a great thing to test. Uh, removing the uh, related articles and then see if that leads to more people um, uh, voting articles helpful. But of course, um, like going back to the topics uh, is only something that you can do if you came from a topic. Um, like if, if like uh, the majority of our users who come from either in product links or uh, Google, then there is no topic to go back to. But still, even in that case, you have the sidebar with the topics, which 
uh, of course, that's what I mean. The sidebar gets okay, yeah, and it's so, so the sidebar so gets far down on the bottom. Yeah, yeah, the sidebar gets very crowded. Um, so the actual uh, topics are very far down the page. So removing related articles and related, and that's the next thing. Related threads might actually lead to more people finding the right article. Um, of course, that is A-B testing. So uh, we didn't have the capability so far. At, at least I didn't know about it. But um, we should have uh, the ability to create a segment, uh, let's say those who didn't see the related articles, and then look at the ratio of helpful votes just for them. And actually, I'm waiting for data to come in. Uh, and we should have that within the next 24 hours. Um, it's, it's a combination between Optimizely that we're using for, for A-B testing and um, Google Analytics, which we're using to track metrics. Uh, so there is, a, there is an integration between those two going on. And I uh, finally managed to set it up uh, today after many, many misgivings uh, there. So what are you testing just, with it? What's your first test? So the first, so the first test is actually about the product planning page the various variations that we have on the product planning page and whether they le lead to more articles being marked as helpful uh, or not. We already know the click-through rate, but we don't know what is the click-through rate per variation in relation to the helpfulness because you want to maximize both of them. Um, actually, you want to maximize the uh, product of those two. Uh, you want to have the CTR times the helpfulness, which if both of them are at 100%, you get 100%. Um, and so you want to maximize the number of people who click through and vote helpful. Right. Cool. Yeah. So that's what I'm looking into right now, but I don't have data yet. Uh, it was very elusive. Uh, but from the last tip I got from Optimizely, from their support, we are hoping that it will work. And I will have that information tomorrow. So what did you find out about related questions? So this is also an interesting one. As you can see, uh, the usage there is even lower. Uh, so 2% of the people clicked on uh, related articles. And only 0.5% click on the related questions. Um, so unfortunately, um, the ratio being so low, uh, I couldn't actually draw any conclusions on the uh, helpfulness. Uh, the helpfulness ratings are so low uh, that the votes, sometimes there are. The huh? amount of votes are so low, not the helpfulness. Yeah. Uh, oh, yes, yes, sorry. sorry. Of course, the votes, the help, uh, helpful right. votes uh, in the forum, uh, helpful or unhelpful votes in the forum, they are so <laughs> low uh, that sometimes you have zero votes on some days. Um, so do you so it wasn't really. Do you just have to run it for a longer time? Well, we could do that, uh, but it's it's um, the statistical. So because it, you you can only do that if nothing changes. But as we make changes, um, it won't be we wouldn't be we wouldn't know uh, whether that that's because uh, of something that we did or whether that is a statistical um, and like, like normal statistical change. Right. Um, a random change, I mean. Uh, so that's um, why why there is a cap on, on these things. Um, we could do it in a sprint where we don't change the forum, for example, or where we don't change the KV. And then we could look at only that time frame. Unfortunately, that time frame is too short. Even if you look at the full month, you don't get enough uh, votes to uh, say much. <laughs> it's uh, really, really low. So what kind of conclusions um, can we draw here? It kind of feels like hardly anyone uses these, so. Yes, and that is actually the conclusion that I'm drawing from this. So if hardly anyone uses it, but it's still taking uh, the space and um, creates actually a burden on the user to, to read through because they have to look in the sidebar and there are a lot of items there and the helpful the the related articles are apparently helpful so it's good to have them there but they are actually obstructed by uh, the related questions um, they add an additional load um, 
So this was an experiment, uh, seeing like uh, whether it would be an improvement or not. Unfortunately, we can't tell. But also because the helpfulness rating in the forums are generally really low, uh, like lower than 50%. Right. Um, so the question is whether um, even if you had uh, 20 30 percent helpfulness rating like that means that more than half of the people who click on the threads they don't actually find it helpful um, yeah. so my conclusion is that I would remove uh, the uh, threads and see if that changes anything on the side like it should actually lead to more people clicking on the helpful uh, related Articles instead, right? Or picking or another topic else. or something, or right. So these are only different click these patterns. are only then helpful if otherwise people would uh, drop out. Like if it meant that if they don't have that, then people are dropping off. Right. That's a reason to have them there. Um, so because there is still a chance that the art uh, that the question might help them, even if it is low, there is at least a chance. Some but chance. if they drop off, there is no chance at all. Um, so that that's one thing to test uh, uh, to further test like if you don't have them do people uh, uh, drop off or do they um, do something else and that's actually th uh, something that we can test with Optimizely so we should test uh, I'm trying yeah. to figure this out Re, uh, what are we testing? Next we're, so we're testing whether uh, people uh, bounce Enga more, or what? Yeah. Enga oh. Well, it's called engagement. Okay. Uh, but yeah. If engagement decreases when we remove related questions, engagement is the Google Analytics term, correct? In other words, if they bounce away from the site. I think Google Analytics uh, uses bouncing, um, but uh, engagement is the lingo on optimize the yeah. But it, may, it almost means the same thing. So balance in Google terms is when people see only this one page and then nothing else. Um, that's a balance. Uh, and, so, and engagement is uh, whether they did anything on this page, regardless of whether they have seen other pages on Sumo. Um, OK. Anything, and so, and we said about uh, related questions, uh, articles, uh, related yeah. articles, so this seems good, right? This is, these seem helpful at least. Yeah, but we still want to test um, what would happen if we remove the related articles and see if that leads to more helpful votes for people who then click on the uh, topics and browse uh, uh, the topic. All right, so. Say that again, so we should test removing them and see if people uh, click on the topics. Uh, could you say that again? I didn't catch that. What What would be the test to run? I'm trying to, or you can type it down there under actions and decisions uh, about removing related articles. What What would be the test that we would do? Oh, we would, we would see if uh, it leads to more people actually clicking uh, through to an article and vote. Okay. Like, uh, the, whether the helpfulness, the average helpfulness, goes up essentially. All right. Anything else about articles and questions? Uh, if anyone has any question about this, anyone any, has anything that should be tested, let me know, um, and we can totally do that. Um, I think that there is a lot more stuff that we can do, probably. 
but these are the very basics and we should have actually done them when we introduced them but better late than never yep cool better late than never agreed all right um the next thing from last week was this uh thing about considering both desktop and mobile use cases and um i brought it up in the monday meeting and i put it in the what's up with sumo and i was about to do it in the contributor form this morning and got distracted by another thread in the contributor form so i will finish doing that after the meeting Um, and then I asked Kadir to say something about the download button, and he put a link here, which I think is the little so, graph. Yeah. Yeah, I can talk about this very this quickly to cool, give some I context. Thought. Yeah. Uh, actually, this is also part of my presentation for um, uh, for for the work people. Oh, I didn't want to steal so, your thunder. No, that's okay. okay. Apparently, not not a lot of people are in this meeting. So, and, and the ones who are here. Please act very surprised when you hear this during the uh, <laughs> work week. Uh, okay, so this is actually about to give context. This is about the product landing page. Um, so on the product landing page, we have a we have a download button that's right up there, uh, up on the uh, upper right corner, um, and it's very flashy. Uh, it's actually one of the very few items on the page that that has any color. Um, so of course, when I was looking at the um, usage of that page, how people engage with that product, with the product landing page. I was curious um, what the percentage of people uh, was who click on that link. Like when they, when they come to Sumo, they land on this page, what percentage of them clicks on that button? And it's surprisingly, and it's a lot, 7.5% actually click on the download button uh, to, to um, and that's the interesting question, Did for what? <laughs> Like, um, they click on that button, so they go away. They don't click through to an article, so that must be bad, right? Um, because they never see an article. How can we help them if they never see an article? That's the metric that we were shooting for, actually. How many people come to the download page and then click through to an article? But those who click on this button, they go away. So I was really um, curious. Did they click on it because they think it's flashy and they want to know what's behind it, like what is behind that button, uh, where will it lead me because it's the most flashy thing on a page. Some people or do actually, they actually do. Know? Yeah, it's true. Um, or do they actually want to, uh, um, do they know what they want and <laughs> they find that button helpful? Do they know what they want? So this is, this is the uh, graphic. Uh, so what we did was, uh, and this is also, um, that's why I wanted to talk about it to, to everyone. Um, this is one way of guerrilla uh, surveying, so to say, guerrilla UX. You want to know why people are doing things. And in traditional settings, you can't. You have to get them into the lab or go out, go out there and do stuff like this to, to watch people while they use your product. What we can do, actually, with A-B testing is, first, we can uh, launch surveys, right? We can ask people directly why they're doing it. But then we can also go in, uh, put this uh, in their face, so to say. With A-B testing, we can uh, lead one portion of our users to the survey instead of leading them to the download page. So we can ask them to please complete the survey before downloading it. I mean, we will uh, give them the download button and the download page anyway, even if they say no. Um, but this is a very easy, very quick way to figure out why people are doing things on the side. So I did just that. I gave people a survey when they clicked on the download button and the results were more than surprising. Um, so it turns out, actually, users know what they want when they click on that button. Only 2.4 percent, uh, yeah, only 2 percent were genuinely curious. They just wanted to know what's behind that button. Everyone else actually had a reason to click that thing. Which, uh, and but still, that 2.4 2 percent, like, that's so, I think that's so funny. Like, it's a download yeah. button. What would you, what would you think would happen like that? that <laughs> I'm I don't so know. You just I'm so curious to find out to find out th was that what they expected or did or was this unexpected? Yeah, absolutely, but but I also should actually uh, put a disclaimer on this because any survey that you do on the web 
the best practice is to assume that there is an error rate of 2%. Oh. Uh, so because you don't give that to them in person, they ne don't necessarily take the time. Like if you would be doing a survey where you actually have people in a room, um, they might not actually make that mistake. So the, it could be that it is 0%. But the generally accepted error rate uh, for surveys on the web is about 2%. Still, um, it's interesting. Why would they click it? Yeah. Well, anyway, it's, it's a very small percentage of already uh, uh, only 7.5%. So this is 2% of 7.5% to come on the site and then uh, click on the download button and don't know why. <coughs> so it's actually, uh, it, um, yeah, there are more important portions, like, for example, that big red portion there, which is 52%, who say that they actually want to update Firefox. So which makes sense. Um, there is a new version of Firefox. You want to have it. You want to update. You go to the support page or the download page or whatever, and you download Firefox. However, the surprising thing is that most people almost all of the people who say that they want to down update Firefox, they are already on the latest version. Uh, so there is not much of a reason for them to update. But of course, it's, it's hard them for what them. They have, or maybe they figure it will solve the problem that they're having by re-updating, re-updating. Well, that is another, uh, yeah. Of course, you would have to ask them to know that, you would, you would have to ask them a follow-up survey. You have to give them a follow-up survey uh, where you can ask them, why do you want to update Firefox? And then you would get uh, answers related to that. But here we just want to know why they are downloading Firefox. And in over 50% of the cases, they want to download it because they want to update their version. So 16% say they don't have Firefox on their computer which is surprising because most people who come to this page actually come from the in-product link. Um, <laughs> so they might be confused. Who knows? Uh, but 50% say they want to update Firefox. Um, and what we can do, of course, for them is, like, they don't need to update Firefox. They already have the latest version. So we can tell them, maybe on the button, uh, congratulations, you have the latest Firefox version. And no need to click through. Please don't download a new version. You already have it. Won't change anything. Um, so yeah, and for and this is also surprising. Twenty three percent of them who would download Firefox from here. They actually want to fix a problem, and they have this mental model that um, if you install Firefox again on top of Firefox, it will solve the problem. But of course, we know it probably won't because it will use the old uh, profile. And that's, in most cases, what you want to get rid of. Um, so Michael, you want to talk about what we could do in that case? Yeah, I mean, the, the big thing is I think we probably have to get them to, do, to run this test like on Mozilla.org and confirm that it's, it's that kind of or it's significant there, I can't, I personally don't imagine that that it's not significant. I think it could be, uh, um, there could be at least as many people, or percentage-wise, which is way more people than come to the support site and click the download button. Um, but just on our site alone, that's a million people a year saying they're trying to fix Firefox by downloading a new copy. Um, so hopefully, this is this is good information for getting the reset on reinstall use case built. Um, it's been designed and proposed for forever since day one, because it was supposed to be the what we thought would be the most prominent use case or the the most likely use case, um, the one that users would discover on their own. Um, we would say so. Hopefully, we can maybe get that done one of these darn days. Right. I so I think that, yeah, that is very, very. Um, uh, so so I, I would say it's, it's it's the data is interesting, but I'm very hopeful um, 
that we will get the reset feature in there. Uh, we might want to do something about the UX of that, though. I, I thought about it a little bit more, 50% download Firefox to update them, to update their version. So it will be first interesting to know from those how many of those actually want to fix a fix problem something. with updating. Uh, but if that's not a big uh, percentage, we have to be careful uh, with the reset. Uh, because they, those actually, they don't want to reset anything. They just want to update for whatever reason. And that's the important part, right. figure out why they want to update. Um, and talking to Holly, she said on Mozilla.org, they found that most people clicking download wanted to update <laughs> also. Um, I don't know if they found anything. I, I didn't get details about what they asked and, and what answers they got, but they noticed this behavior of, people trying to update Firefox by downloading it again as, a, as like the biggest use case. And, um, and they're talking about doing the thing that you were talking about, Kadir, making the download button in some way smarter to let you know you're already updated. Uh, hopefully they will do that, then we can just steal it. Yeah. Uh, you won't have to do that on our end, like we did with the current download button. Yeah. All the logic is from uh, uh, Mozilla.org. Um, so what we can also do, if they are not going to do it, we can do a follow-up survey uh, for those who so say, I want to update Firefox and ask them, why would you like to do that? Um, and we can give them a number of options, like uh, multiple choice options. And um, it should be a fairly quick survey, and it will give us probably a good insight into what's going on with those people. Because I can imagine that right now, nobody really knows why people are updating their browser. Because that's not really a fun thing to do. You don't wake up and say, today, I'm going to update my browser. I would like to do that. that. Like we fun. should do that. I, I'll, I'll help you if you need help coming up with the questions well, or whatever. That's the thing. Uh, the question is easy, like, why are you updating? But uh, the potential answers, that's the important part. You don't want people to type stuff in. Right. So you want to give them the buckets that, um, so in this case, uh, the other the other percentage, uh, it's all free from text, but I didn't read it. Don't have the time for that. Um, but as long as it's small, it doesn't matter. Uh, there will always be, uh, um, like, because we only had uh, five buckets, uh, four buckets, there will always be more reasons. Um, but you want to keep those other, uh, that other bucket small. So you have to come up with good uh, um, choices for why they might be doing this. Um, Okay, I think we've beaten that one to death. Oh, I think there is lots more here, actually, but um, I think that's the most interesting part of this for now. Uh, but yeah. going down, going forward, like once we have more answers, uh, there could be more stuff coming out of this. So I'm also um, talking about this so much because I really want to. Uh, um, focus on and, and uh, let everyone know that we can do stuff like this. Like, if you have a question about behavior, like why are people doing this or that, you can actually get in there, do A-B testing, or uh, do quick surveys to get information like this. Um, it's totally, it's, it's really quick. There is nothing dirty about it. It's really just quick and you get a lot of uh, valuable information. And you don't need developer involvement for this. It doesn't take two sprints or four sprints until it's in there. It's just from one day to the other we can do this. That's awesome. Um, all righty. Next week, let's not have this meeting. Since no, we can't. We'll yeah. be doing I don't know what. All right, so. We will be doing team meetup for those of you. Who are and we're we're in? We are stranded in a Mozilla office conference room for yep. eight hours a day, usually ten hours a day. So it sounds glamorous, but it isn't. All right. Um, Firefox twenty four updates done or mainly done. Mainly done. Yeah. Yeah. One one still polishing an article, uh, Android article. But I, um, yeah. I put it in the Elton N forum. I sent an email to the locale leaders. Um, I, people already jumped on some of them. Uh, and luckily, it's not a giant list 
like last time. In fact, the biggest updates, the biggest changes are like deleting large sections of articles. <laughs> so easy stuff. Getting rid of getting rid of things. Um, anything else, Roland? Do you want to re-ask your question about about graphs? About oh, okay. Let me see if I can be brief and concise, and hopefully Kadir can be brief and concise as well, since this meeting is running late. I believe, oh, we have officially uh, got Google Analytics for support.munzalo.org. This means uh, that for every web page on Sumo, KB, and Forum, we can uh, create real-time graphs of whatever data Google Analytics can capture. That creation of graphs for now is limited to employees, but the graphs themselves are publicly visible. Is that correct, Kadir? Yes, that is correct. And uh, regarding the kind of information that you can get, it's stuff like uh, top articles uh, visited in Spain or in Spanish. And um, yeah, any information that Google Analytics can give us. Or it could be something like, to use a KB example, sorry, a forum example, it could be like the most, the top five threads with the most traffic in yeah. a certain period. Um, is there a lag in the data? Like you said, real time. Is there a lag? So it's uh, five minutes delayed, an hour delayed, twenty-four hours delayed. I'm not sorry. I should have asked that question before. But so if you, if you want to have static data, static data is data that uh, when you care about a certain time frame, um, then you get the information right away. Right. Um, of course, there is also stuff that you want to update on a continuous basis, like um, something where you show the last thirty days or uh, you want to show everything since the beginning until today um, and it, it needs to have it's need, it, that's what I mean with live updated um, like I, you can do charts that get uh, in uh, new data continuously and will be added to the chart and that happens uh, once a day so once a day the Google Analytics chart is updated with the latest data um, but of course you can always do it ad hoc like if you want to have information about anything, you, you get the data that is on Google Analytics. It's, it carries Google Analytics. So it's delayed by 24 hours? Is that what you're saying? If you're, like, you're real time? For, for continuous, uh, yeah. Uh, the, the live updated stuff is uh, uh, updated once a day. Perfect. We can make it update more often, but usually there is not much of a reason to do that. But if you create something right now, it'll give you the latest data it has. Yeah. yeah, which may be a few hours old. Well, it's as old as Google Analytics is. Oh, right. Like it's live data, so it is the same data that Google Analytics has at that point. Okay. So, getting back to the employees only for now, can vouched Mozillians do this, or will they eventually be able to do this? That's what I actually don't know. I haven't tested that yet. I would like to look into that to see if that this is just for. Um, uh, just for uh, people with a Mozilla account, because you have to be uh, to create a sheet, or you have to be uh, authorized uh, for Google Analytics, and that is for Mozilla employees only. But once the sheet is created, it might be possible to actually use it uh, without uh, uh, authorization from um, uh, well, without authorization for Google Analytics. So I will have to look into that, and I can give you feedback. Uh, once yeah. tested that. That would be great because I know there are Mozillians who are totally interested in, in creating reports for us and it would be great to get them to do this, like come up with an etherpad and say, hey, can you do this? Mm -hmm. Or they could come up with their own etherpads and they could implement themselves. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's early days. We just got this capability, right? So we're still sort of kicking the tires, right? But it's yeah. fantastic. We didn't have anything like this before. Before we had to go through this tortuous SQL process of downloading the data to a separate server, finding a server, keeping that server up. Now it's all automatically handled by Google. Thank you, Google. I mean, isn't the big, the big thing is um, um, rather right than going through all that work, 
Um, it's maybe not so much that um, a contributor can create these because they still would need LDAP access to Google Analytics or whatever, but it's that we, you can, Kadir can set, he's, he's now, he can do these things like super fast, I don't know, super fast, but you know, it's, it's not, it's right. not rocket science. And he can like plug Google Analytics into a, into a spreadsheet, which then we can make public. We can't make any of the Google Analytics public. Um, right. Uh, so, so we could do a lot more public reporting. Now. Yeah. Well, th th yes. it's that, but it's also that on uh, the spreadsheets, we can do actually calculations and you can't compute stuff right. on Google Analytics. Uh, so before you would have to download the data, use Excel or uh, Google Spreadsheet uh, to calculate that, and you would have to copy, copy paste new data as you got it. Like once a week, you would you would have to get new data in there to compute it on a spreadsheet. Um, so that's not necessary anymore. The data uh, gets in there automatically once a day. It gets all the new data, it computes it, and it creates a graph based on that. That's awesome. So. So, so it's um, essentially doing Android, what the dashboards were doing before. What I will do is, from an Android point of view, I will create a uh, Etherpad with our in our standard Sumo format. You know, I as a Google as an Android support coordinator would like to see this report for this values, and then I will do this on a public Etherpad, work with Kadir. And that will be a sort of a working example so other people can take it for desktop in Firefox OS. Or you can do your own. You don't have to wait for me, but I'm just saying if you give me an action item, then we'll do something that other people can learn from. Right. Does that sound good? Give me an action item to do some report for Android. There'll probably be Android KB that I'll be doing a report for. Uh, a real-time graph for, well, 24-hour delay. Right, and we can always use this um, as, as prototyping for an actual yeah. uh, Sumo dashboard. Like, if it's important yeah. enough, it should be part of our platform. Yeah. Um, but we can use this to prototype and see if data is actually interesting to us, whether we need it long term, and stuff like that. Yeah, so I will create an Etherpad with this use, use case and then uh, work with uh, Kadir and publicize that so other people, uh, contributors, and employees can, can learn from that and do their own reports. So yeah, I think this is great. We prototype on this, or we get some ideas on this, and then if, if we need to, we make it part of real Katsumi dashboard. Very cool. All right. Anything else? Rosanna, do you have anything? Uh, no, I'm actually trying to prepare some um, and presentations on uh, localization and we're working on the localization tools and now we have an aggregated dashboard which is still giving some errors that's why i didn't present it today um, i saw that this yes, morning yeah it's there's some errors so that's why i think that we should wait on yeah no, i'm just working on some documentation about it so that we can you know post it on the blog cool yep. yeah there's a bunch of those things that are getting done that we should probably yeah, Do yeah, I'm, I'm doing that right now. Awesome. Okay, mm -hmm. great. So I, <laughs> my plan is to do a, a blog post, which is the thing that will get out of the door, uh, you know, more quickly, and then I will turn that into documentation, so we have that also in the knowledge base. Awesome. Cool. Yeah. So the idea is to have a, a, a like a how to be a locator sort of article. Yes. Nice. How to be an awesome locale leader. Yeah. Or yeah. I'll use the word. Oh. You don't want to just yeah. be a regular Super. one. <laughs> you can just be yeah, that's, you're that's kind of the local leader, right? You gotta exactly. be an awesome one. <laughs> yeah, oh. exactly. Cool. Yeah, so that's what I'm working on. Stay tuned. Right. <laughs> that's it for my side. All right. I think that sounds like a meeting. Cool. Unless there's any last things. See you in two weeks. All right. Bye. Ciao, cheers. Bye guys. Bye. Have a great Bye. week.